All right, welcome everyone. Uh, so the first session we had was sort of an overview of the School of Computing at the University of Utah and a little bit about what computer science is. And in fact, the following session after this will be the same. Uh, this session I hope is a little more informal and a chance to ask some questions of some real live students in the School of Computing. And so I have, uh, there's four students that are joining us and I'm gonna, when we start talking, I'm, I'm gonna ask them just maybe introduce themselves briefly as we as they uh, first talk, um, but the idea here is to learn a little bit about just sort of some different experiences of people who have gotten internships, maybe been a teaching assistant, maybe a research assistant, been part of different uh, other activities at, at the School of Computing. For example, we have you know clubs and professional organizations, and uh, just kind of see what you know. This might be a great chance just to ask questions about you know what is life like as someone in the undergrad program um, and what what kind of opportunities have they had. So thanks for joining us. And I think I'm gonna start um, by asking people to talk a little bit about, I think the internships, again, are a big focus of our uh, school in the sense that we think they really help people get prepared for um, their future careers. You learn a little bit about what it's like to you know, work at a company um, and you pick up some great skills and you could also get paid, you know, pretty reasonably well for uh, a summer job kind of thing. So we haven't really, unfortunately, figured out a good way to kind of like order people or, or so I'm going to just ask um, some of our panelists to just start jumping in and saying maybe just talk about where they first started doing internships, what the process was like, and then what the actual experience was like a, lo a little bit. So take it away. I can start. Um, so I, my first internship, I actually yeah, got. Actually, through, maybe, maybe just again, do introduce yourself just briefly, oh, like say where you are. Right. So. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> I'm Kaylin. Um, I'm a. I guess I'm a BSMS student starting my first semester as finishing all my graduate classes. So I've done all of my undergraduate requirements already. Um, but I technically will get that degree later on. So the BSMS program is just like a nice way to combine those two. Um, and so I'm also a current TA uh, for Professor Johnson, actually, um, teaching his 1410 class. Um, yeah, so I can get started with my internship experience. So I got that um, my first internship through the Grace Hopper conference. And I don't know if you guys have heard of that before, but it's basically a conference um, geared towards encouraging more women in um, STEM, but specifically computing as well, um, and more in just like technical fields like that. And so um, every year they have this conference that has just this giant career fair. And so you kind of just walk around just trying to like advertise yourself for finding internships. And I know a lot of people have really good success um, going to that conference as well. So that was where I got my first one um, at Northrop Grumman, which um, it's, I, it was stationed at Hill Air Force Base. So then I had to like drive up up north to <laughs> and um, basically do my internship on an Air Force Base, which is kind of a unique experience. Um, and then I think that something really important to remember is that like, I think in if you're trying to get into industry, then internships are really heavy hitters. So if the more internships you have and the more experience you have, just allows you to find better companies that maybe you're more interested in. Um, and so I would really recommend searching hard for getting more internship experience. Thanks. Anyone want to take it Anyone away? <laughs> yeah, so I'm, my name is Serena Ashelman. I'm a senior. I've interned at NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory and Cisco. Um, I'm currently a TA and I'm president of Women in Computing. and I think internships are really important because everything you learn in school isn't really indicative of what you actually do in the industry because you have like prompts in, in your classes and you can like collaborate with other students but during an internship you're not all working on the exact same thing in different variations it's very unique to whatever your project is and so you kind of just have to figure it out using lots of google and like any resources you have to try and figure out the task 
And of course you can ask questions to your mentors and stuff, but it's not like they're going to be like, oh, you do this to solve it because chances are they might not know how to solve your problem either. So, yeah. How did, how did you get the JPL internship? Like what was your oh, process there? Yeah, to get the JPL internship, I actually have a friend who goes to Caltech and he let me know that the JPL application is separate from the normal NASA application. So it was kind of like a networking thing. And so then I applied and you need a letter of recommendation and I got it from one of my first CS professors. So make friends with your professors in your early years to get that internship, like as soon as that summer rolls around that you have nothing to do. And then JPL, at least it was an educational internship. So they don't expect you to have any skills. And as long as you have an eagerness to learn, they'll hire you. So, yeah. I go next. <laughs> Actually, go oh. Corianne, you go next. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm Corianne. Um, most people call me Corey, which is typically, typically just what I go by. I use she, her, hers pronouns and I'm a fourth year. Um, and I am one of the coordinators for the data science club, or should say associate coordinators, still in flux. Um, and I'm also one of the vice presidents for the board game club, which is called the Great Moon Game Society. Um, and so far I've had two internships. Uh, one of them was for this nonprofit called Hopeful Science. And the way I got that was I started doing research with a professor and at the end of the semester, he was like, hey, do you want to continue to work with me over the summer? <laughs> And I was like, yes. Um, so that was great. And then the second one was at Intuit, which was most recent. Um, and I got that one through the Grace Hopper resume database. Uh, they reached out to me via email with a coding challenge and I just did it. And yeah, it was really, really good. <laughs> okay, so my name's Lee. This is, I'm also a first year BSMS student and that's like doing your master's and your undergraduate within like a couple of years. So we're doing it within three semesters rather than the three, two or three semesters, uh, two or three years you're supposed to finish your master's degree. And um, my first internship I got, it, it's a really unique circumstance because I applied to a bunch of scholarships to the University of Utah. And one of them was like this Asian Pacific Islander um, scholarship. And there I had to, meet a bunch of the people that were donators to that scholarship and I met a man that was actually um, reprogramming the Regent Scholarship if any one of you are familiar with the Regent Scholarship and so this was the time when everything was moving from like paperwork just to online application and he met me and he said are you in CS if so like tell me a little bit about yourself and I guess he really liked me and so he was like, do you want an internship? And he gave it to me. And um, that's really unique because I've never really had an internship where during the application process, I didn't do a coding challenge, which is um, normal standard when you're applying for internships. And- Can you say yeah, a little more about what that, what that is? I think that's, a, you know, it's a little unusual thing about computer science jobs, this whole idea of these like programming challenges. Can you just tell people a little bit about what that experience is like? Yeah, for sure. Um, coding challenges is essentially um, the very first step within an internship application where uh, they send you a coding prompt. So it's like a problem that they want you to solve. And you're usually given in a time limit. So standard is about an hour to two hours. And very few actually like give you a day, a week. But yeah, so usually you're in a time crunch and they essentially want to see how well you program if you can utilize algorithms like David had mentioned in the previous talk um, before this and um, how well you solve the problem because in computer science, you can have a bunch of different approaches to a problem. Um, and there are solutions that may be a little bit better than others um, in different aspects. So there are pros and cons to different solutions. And if you do well in these programming challenges, then they will get back to you about maybe a follow-up interview, or they might do a technical interview where you code face to face with them. But with this pandemic, it's generally a Zoom call where you share your screen and you code while they kind of ask you about your thought process. And then after that, they might contact you about another follow-up interview, or they might give you an offer. Yeah. 
then where was your most recent um, internship? I thought you had one this last summer. Oh, yeah. I interned for mm -hmm. Recursion Pharmaceuticals. And the year before that, I had a research internship at Vanderbilt University, which was nice. So sounds like a whole bunch of great experiences from people. Um, I will say maybe that a lot of their ways of getting internships were a little unusual. Uh, I think a more common way often is like their job, these job fairs, uh, both our CS specific one and also there's like a STEM job fair and also just a general job fair at the U. And a lot of companies come and the process there is you often just go around with like, you know, resumes and stuff and stand in line and talk to people and get a little 10 minute starter interview or something. And then hopefully a couple of them follow up with a more uh, formal process. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to yeah, get involved. Um, but I think the, the important thing is that a lot of people take advantage of these, these things and, uh, you know, uh, do land interesting opportunities, even, you know, their second year, third year kind of in the CS program. Um, and I will say a couple of years ago, I, I interviewed my third year class or <clears throat> third semester class about internships and asked about just like pay scales, right? And at the time, a couple of years ago, that, that I remember there, people were saying they were sort of their summer, you know, summer internship pay was like 18 to $35 an hour. Um, and I think, you know, I've, I've heard the high end go a little higher these days. You know, the big companies on the West Coast will often also chip in housing costs to live in San Francisco for the summer kind of stuff, you know, an extra 10K for that. And so anyway, you can, you know, it's uh, it's fun to get involved in, in this, but also it's not an internship, it's not like a standard internship where you're like uh, not paid anything and fetching coffee for people, you're actually doing real things and getting paid some, some reasonable money to start. Um, so again, if you're interested in coming with you or anywhere really, I'd still encourage you to uh, do an internship um, I'm going to talk about research stuff a little. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Someone messaged me um, privately on the chat. And sorry, I'm not going to name you because I feel like you um, wanted to be private for a reason. But they asked if I learned how to code in high school or college. And I feel like this is a good question for everyone that's here. Um, personally, for me, I started off in computer, no, not computer science. <laughs> I started off as a biochem major and I got halfway through the major when I decided to switch. And um, I had no coding experience prior to that. And I really struggled throughout the first few courses, but you learn a lot. And I'm not just trying to do a little plug for the School of Computing at the University of Utah, but um, it's really, really freaking hard the first couple of classes because we learn things called programming languages and um, it's essentially like learning a new language and it's really, really hard. It's a huge learning curve, but I know it sucks to hear, but you get better the more that you do it. And so, um, yeah, I just, I wasn't the best student. I still don't think I am, but I did enough where I learned a lot and you're going to have to learn to not like, you're going to realize early on that you're not going to be the best at it. Um, because I remember all throughout high school, I was a pretty decent student. Like I got a pretty high ACT. I got like scholarships. And then when I entered into college, I wasn't at the top of the food chain anymore. I was at, I felt like I was at the bottom. And so you experiencing, you experience things like the imposter syndrome, which I think some of you should talk about too. And yeah, just throwing that out there. I had no no coding experience prior to that. Yeah, I, I do want to say, you know, like um, there, there is a reason that companies want to pay people $100,000 a year to work there. And, and that is fundamentally computer science has a lot of skills involved with it. And those skills don't have to mean you're a genius. It just means you have to pick up those skills, right? You have to have some knowledge here and, and be effective at this job. And our, our, our goal in the undergrad program is to prepare you for that kind of stuff, which means that there is some hard work involved. I mean, if you're learning guitar, you know, you have to put in hours and hours of practice before you can do anything reasonably well. And same thing with computer science. It just takes a lot of practice. And, you know, again, I'm a PhD professor in computer science, plenty of times where I'm working on some problem 
and you know i'm stumped for a day i'm staying up till 2 a.m cursing you know like ah, i can't i need to get this work in and, and then you know you have some insight and and you you move on but those are the skills you learn you have to learn persistence and you have to learn how to be very careful about investigating your program and tracking down problems and things like that and it happens to everyone there is some suffering involved those you know when you're just stuck on some problem and you can't figure it out it's it's enormously frustrating but you have to learn to take a deep breath and somehow move past it. Um, I am curious if any can add to the chat, like who who is doesn't really know anything about computer science or programming, and who's had some sort of high school experience. I'm just kind of kind of curious about that. If you can type something in in chat, see what your experience is, or whether you haven't really done anything. So again, you know, not not too many schools have like AP computer science. There are some, so some people have some experience, some people have some less formal stuff, and then there's different levels of computer science. Um, I will say that uh, we're we're making some efforts to sort of accommodate people that have some prior experience and not in the um, intro computer sequence. And so, you know, I think we're certainly you shouldn't come in thinking like. Oh, all these other people have already done a whole bunch of computer stuff. Our, our job is to train you from the from the beginning, so don't worry um, about that. Um, I should add on to yeah. this. So I came in high school. I didn't have any programming experience, and I went into college with the intent of becoming an econ major. I'm double majoring, but like somewhere during one of my econ courses, I was like, the computers can do economics better than an economist can. So I thought I would take a couple programming classes just for funsies. And it was really interesting and really fun to do. And the first CS class, which is 1410 that I took, it was kind of daunting to be there because one, I am female identifying. And so there are very few females in those classes, unfortunately, but like, so I'm kind of already intimidated, but then on top of that, there are students who have high school years of experience, as well as like, maybe they've been coding since they were eight and they ask these really intense questions. And I'm just like, whoa, what? We need to know that. And it's just really scary, but you know, it's fine. Cause if you ask some other people, maybe not the kids who are raising their hands and asking these really intense questions, like you're all going, what did they just ask? And it's all kind of like very nice. And if you continue through, it kind of gets easier, especially if you continue to practice. And the money during an internship reminds you that it's worth it. So, yeah. Let, let, let me say also that uh, from the professor point of view, those people that are asking those what seem like mysterious technical questions, half the time they're, they have no idea what they're babbling about and they're totally wrong anyway. So uh, it's okay that it doesn't make any sense. I do have some questions. There's one of um, do AP classes help in this major? They happen help in two ways. One, it is nice if you have a CS AP. You can either skip a class or just be feel a little more prepared for our intro class. And then if you have other AP classes, it frees up your schedule a little bit. You can get some credit, like Gen Ed kind of credit, and so it just maybe relaxes the pace if you're you know trying to get through in four years kind of thing. Um, and then someone else asked, what advice do you have for women who are planning to go into the CS field, seeing how it's uh, male dominated? Maybe I'll let our panel of, uh, of women CS people add, add to that a little bit about advice for for this. And maybe a good chance to talk about some of the club stuff you're active, you know, involved in and, and so on. So I think Lee, Kalen, and Kalen, yeah, they're all, they were or have been officers for women in computing at some point during their college career. And it's a fairly new club. It started like two years ago. Um, and it's like a really good place for women to come around and like get support. And some of your experiences, if you just wanna rant, other people can one validate you, but also say they've had a similar experience and give you some advice for how to like handle it or like perceive it so on. And it's a really good place just to like come together and hear that you're not alone. There are also other clubs like uh, the Association for Computing Machinery, Data Science Club, some other clubs that I can't think of right now, but they all like foster a sense of community, especially like now with it being virtual. So, yeah. Um, I think that with um, being a woman in computing, like especially because uh, there are less women in your field and you'll see this in your classes as well. Um, it's 
easy to feel like you don't belong or um, it's kind of like that imposter syndrome that um, has been brought up before where it's this idea that you don't have the skills or you don't feel like you fit into the general, um, like all the other students. Like it feels like everyone else knows what they're doing and then you don't feel like you know what you're doing because, but everyone in reality is really confused and they're also struggling along with you. Everyone is working hard. And so um, I think already just not seeing a lot of other women in computing, then it's it's kind of harder to get over that hurdle, I guess you could say. But um, I do think that it's important to find uh, good friends in your major, not only women, but also like, um, I guess you could call them allies as well, that people that are going to support you and people that are going to um, help you succeed. Maybe I should ask, you know, I think that's some great advice about finding like, you know, study groups and friends and a, and a network. Um, and, and some of you sort of talking a little bit about the, you know, your first year challenges. And, I, and I'm just curious if any of you have any other advice for how to, uh, how to succeed, you know, when you first start off in college, I guess. I think that's, uh, it would be nice if you had any insights there. Every day for my first week of school, I sat by a new person and introduced myself and then decided who I wanted to be friends with the following weeks. And some of us are still friends, so yeah. Yeah, um, the first couple of CS classes that I took, um, I met a group of students and it became this huge group of just students that um, needed help in a class and I know to this day they still talk and they hang out and um, yeah it's CS is really hard and doing it alone is even harder unless you're a mad genius um, but it's really helpful to have friends that can help you along because Kaylin and I are like really really tight but um, we we've gone through most of our undergrads together and we were even taking um, grad school classes together and it's really nice because she helps me out. We help each other out. And a lot of upper division classes have projects as assignments where you work with another individual. And they do this so that you can get an idea of what it's actually like to work in partners. And you might think that you have an idea because you've done it a lot in high school, but you really don't. Um, because in CS, you either have a decent partner or your partner will ride on your coattails and you will really see that in computer science because if they don't pull their weight, you see it. So make friends. Yeah, and don't be scared to reach out either because everyone is coming from like a new high school. Like nobody really knows each other. These classes are massive. So like everyone wants to be making friends. And so don't be scared to reach out and find new connections. And, and don't be scared to reach out to the faculty too, right? I mean, uh, and again, we're, we're there to try to help you and the teaching assistants and, and uh, the faculty are, are, you know, want you to su succeed. We're not, we don't have, you know, there are these, I, this idea of like weed out classes. We're not really trying to design weed out classes. Um, we want you to get through the classes. And so make sure you're, if you're having struggles, you, you uh, stay in touch with the, the course staff. Maybe speaking about that, so one other aspect are these internal, besides external internships, are these internal roles in the uh, School of Computing, and they're primarily teaching assistants and research assistants. And so I know a lot of you had some experience in those directions, and maybe you could talk about that a little bit, both sort of why you think that's a helpful thing and sort of what it's like to be part of that community. Someone go, I'd answer if I, I wasn't listening. I'm sorry. Yeah, can you repeat the question? I like lost the end of it. <laughs> it was a very long question. What's, what's it like being a TA or RA or how did you get involved in that? Yeah, okay, so I'm an RA um, and I've been an RA for like a year and a half. I started off doing research under Professor Venkata Subramanian. Um, and the way that happened was I went to a career fair in like uh, I think around my second year. And until you're a third year, basically they don't, care about you, which is rough to say, but true. 
Um, so I went in and I was talking, I was like, okay, to make myself less depressed by this rejection, I'm just gonna learn as much as I can by being here. So I went around and I asked like, I know that I'm not really eligible right now, but what can I do in, to be more eligible in the future? Um, and something that a lot of people recommended to me was like, go to research and get as many products as you can under your belt. So um, before this, in one of my lectures, uh, Professor Venkata Subramanian came and he talked about ethics and his research. And I was really interested in that. So I remembered this and then I went to him, I sent him an email and I was like, hey, I'm really interested in this thing that you talked about. Is there any chance I could do research with you? And he was like, yes, cool. <laughs> and then I did. Um, and so that's how I got into that. And then uh, at a later date, I realized that I was really interested in computing education research. And I brought that up with Professor Venkata Subramanian. And then he basically reached out and introduced me to Dr. Elian Wiese, who is the person I'm doing research under now. So that was kind of like a, you know, networking thing. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's how that went. <laughs> My experience as a TA, um, I think it's really rewarding in the fact that if you start off TAing um, lower level classes, some you you get close enough to some students where you can watch them throughout their um, CS degree and how they grow. And I really enjoyed TAing classes that I've already taken because it gives you a um, a deeper understanding of what you learned during the course because um, even though I'm a grad student and I'm TAing for David Johnson too, um, he's teaching 1410, which is pretty much the entry level course like you first take when you start CS. And I'm still learning things um, every time I, T, I, I TA him um, and this course. Like, yeah, there are just different aspects of CS that you learn more in depth or you learn the why behind it and when you learn the why then you can really utilize what you've learned in a better manner if that makes sense and let me just th throw in there that you know we, we do start getting undergrad tas after their first two courses the cs 1410 2420 uh, basically when they're ready to start entering the major and so they've only been doing, doing a year of programming and like it's it's really great for me when they're one of my students from the year before now they're a ta and they're just like wow this was so hard you know nine months ago and now it, like it's not so bad <laughs> you know like they they realize how much they've progressed in a year of just getting practice and taking classes like what was so hard then they're now able to kind of teach and explain and i think that's a wonderful um thing um there's a question on the course map for bs yeah you should just go look online www.cs.utah.edu looking at the undergrad um stuff basically there's a core sequence and then electives and things like that um it's a pretty standard set up you know we don't have that much time maybe you know we've been talking a lot this is a great time to ask more questions so why don't you let's let's see if we have a few questions we can answer before we wrap up here from from our audience i was going to ask david can you elaborate on your coding summer camp thing because someone asked how you can get like outside experience um, oh yeah so what you know one thing um that i think is fun for us is we i, I run a uh called the Great Camps. It's a programming camps and there's different activities for either upper elementary, middle school or high school students. So we have like some Python high school camps. And one is great to see some people taking those camps and then sometimes coming to the U and, and obviously haven't enjoyed that experience, but also um, I hire a number of, of students to work in there. And again, I think that's a, a valuable thing where again, you're kind of testing your knowledge of, of what of how this stuff works and, and trying to explain it to other people. And, and it's a it's a great sort of starter way to get prepared to, to be a teaching assistant or um, or to just kind of get, you know, do something where you're maybe not quite ready for an internship. So there are opportunities still have technical stuff going on. Um, question, how many hours of homework do you have each week? Well, you know, <laughs> let me just before I let them answer that. <laughs> There's a big range, right? Like uh some projects you go through pretty fast and then some you get that stuck and you're like all night working on it and so it's really that's the cruel thing about it because if you're writing an essay in english you can kind of just get an essay and it's either good or bad and you turn it in in computer science there's this thing where you really want it to be right and so if you get stuck you really can add the hours um but i'll i'll let 
<laughs> I'll close my cover my ears and let the other people <laughs> <into> this. <laughs> yeah, I think it's largely dependent on the class, and you kind of just have to feel this out by talking to people and hearing how it is. But um, like 2420 is kind of infamous for having like super long assignments for the level that it's at. Uh, 4400, which is like a systems class, is also pretty infamous. Like we're working on writing this program called Malloc right now, um, and We've had like at least three weeks to do it. And then we got a week extension and then we got like another week extension because like hardly anyone had finished it. And we had that long to work on it. Um, but other classes are kind of like slow. Like if you take uh, engineering probability and statistics for the CS courses, those assignments are usually a little bit shorter or it just depends, but yeah, it widely varies and definitely ask people before you take a class and like which professor is teaching also tends to have an effect on that. Let me say for like CS 1410, the CS1 class, uh, you sort of have vaguely weekly assignments. And in some surveys we've done, people report having spend sort of, in, you know, the middle two thirds of people spend between five and 15 hours a week on, on assignments there. Um, so again, a big range, but, but not an inconsequential amount of time. <laughs> Um, some assignments, they last for like weeks and some are even the entire semester. Um, usually for me, I don't want to sound like, oh, I stay up super late to do homework because that, I'm not proud of it. It like, it really makes me cranky and college really takes a toll on you. But um, I'm taking three CS courses and I generally stay up until two most nights um doing homework and i do homework all day like my day starts at nine and then it ends at two and that's generally me doing homework or attending classes or um holding office hours and then eating in between or during <laughs> so the question here about work part-time i will say a lot of U university of utah students either work um in the department or work external to the department there's certainly a fair number of students that have like, you know, families and like real jobs of some form. Um, but like the TA jobs range from 10 to 20 hours a week. So that's a significant amount of time also in that kind of thing. Uh, the question, what kind of careers can come from a CS degree? Um, the, you know, there's a, there's a wide range of stuff here, right? So the, the standard job is some sort of software developer you're working at a company like lucid you're making some sort of you know uh application of some kind but there's a whole huge range of of jobs that use a whole bunch of different skills um you know you're working in different fields you know there's medical informatics there's this like you know uh, uh working for and it's just you know you're working at a film company doing special effects. You're working at a game company doing something. You're working at a robotics company doing something. You're working at a car company doing their internal, you know, when you touch screen on your car. Um, you're working at a medical device company that, that has super specialized like eye surgery robots. Um, you're working for, you know, uh, anyway, I, I can't, you know, any, anything you can imagine basically. Uh, the cool thing about computer science is that it's so versatile, especially now that tech is being integrated in like everything. So you can literally find a job in basically any industry. Off the top of my head, some unique ones. I know that like the New York Times has computer science jobs and internships. Um, I think you say Mattel, like the Barbie company, they have computer science internships, like just random companies that you wouldn't think would need programmers have programmers. Yeah, like even like, you know, the big um, companies you would think would be sort of far from that, like, you know, the oil companies, they actually have huge virtual reality research groups that, you know, help them visualize where oil might be in, in uh, the earth kind of thing. Um, big trucking companies are doing things with scheduling and, and things like that. Um, yeah, to add to that right now, I'm working, um, I think, with the Utah Avalanche Society or whatnot for my virtual reality course. And we're doing like a, we're making a program that essentially simulates a avalanche, avalanche search and rescue, which is like completely far off because like, I've only dealt with like very computer science stuff that you would think of like, 
um, biomedical informatics, like you were talking about, I've done like pharma company stuff, like huge range. In fact, I think one of the fun things about computer science is that you get a chance to learn something about some of these other fields sometimes, like, you know, you can do, we've done collaborations like with dance, right? And done, you know, smart projectors that add to their shadows behind them and, grow, grow, you know, grow wings as they dance or something like that. Um, and you just never know what kind of cool thing you might get, get involved with. Well, I think we're, you know, getting close to the start of our next uh, session. So if you haven't been to my first one, you might want to, um, uh, stick around and learn some more generally about computer science. Um, so, uh, uh, let me just ask someone, why would you want to get a master's compared to BS? I will say, okay, so if you look at the economics of it, an MS is like the highest return on your investment. You spend an extra year or two getting your MS, but um, you're supposed to get paid more and hopefully you're finding a job that you find more interesting in the sense that you have specific skills and you've decided during your master's to focus on robotics or graphics or something like that. Um, so it just gives you a, a, a good chance. Most people would say the PhD from an economic point of view is not worthwhile because you spend a lot more years at it and then you're you know, uh, working at a university or something like that, right? Because you have, so you have to really enjoy that to, to pursue the PhD, enjoy research, enjoy teaching. Um, but I think, I think a master's is a great, great thing to be honest. Um, and, but computer science is interesting in the sense that you, know, you get people who, if you just want a job and earn some money, after your second year, you're probably able to do that if you want to. You, um, I would still recommend getting a BS because if you're gonna move up the management chain of bachelors is a good thing um, to make sure you have under your belt and you're not, don't get seduced by you know, some entry level computer science job and start getting paid and, and give up on your, on your degree. Um, okay, so there's a question, is this the same group or another class? I am just gonna do a more standard PowerPoint presentation on what is computer science and a little bit about the, uh, the, the degree Nowhere near as interesting as, as this one was, unfortunately. But you're welcome to stick around if you want to ask more questions about the uh, school of computing and so on. So let's let's thank our our panel. I really appreciate it. Um, you were great, and nice to see you all on a Saturday. And I, I'm, after hearing about your working from nine to two a.m., you know, for, I know for you to sacrifice to come and do this is a, is a big deal. So I, I do appreciate it as well. Now you know why I'm always late in grading. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, everyone. Again, I'm gonna. So, you know, sort of stop recording and try to have a little pause here just for a few minutes, but you can stick stick around. Okay.